Today I'm going to be showing with you. Showing with you? Huh? What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I create my exam revision tracker. So if you don't know what an exam revision tracker is, don't worry because I kind of just made it up. It's not really a thing. Basically, if I were to describe it, it's kind of like a master to-do list. It helps me to track my progress, track my revision, exam revision tracker, duh. pretty self-explanatory. You would have seen me use this in my exam revision routine video. If you saw it there, you'll know it's very basic. It's nothing like official. I just make it up on Excel. So it's super simple to make and you can adapt it to your own studies. I usually do it for my subjects that have a lot of content. So for example, one of my subjects ended up having like 40 lectures by the end of semester that I had to cover. So that was really helpful because when you have that many lectures, it's really hard to keep track on like which ones you've done recently, which ones you found difficult in the past. This way, if you have it in a central location and you're able to track it, then you can see what you need to prioritize and also just like give you some peace of mind and clarity so that you don't like miss any areas before your final exam. Obviously having a revision tracker like isn't a necessary thing. Some people might go fine without having one, but personally it's like a preference for me to make one just so I can like stress less about missing things out. And also it also motivates me to have one because when I check things off, I find it motivating. So if you think you'd be interested in making one, then keep watching this video and I'll show you how I do it. I thought I would firstly just walk you through how I make it obviously on Excel and create a template for you that you can use. But just bear in mind, it's completely customizable. Even for me, like between my different subjects, they were different for both of them. So customize it however you want. I'll just walk you through what I like to include and how I use it. Also in this video, I wanted to share with you how I actually did something similar in the IB. First things first, let me show you how I make it. So really simple, I make it on Excel. If you don't have Excel, you can also probably use Google Sheets and then open up a blank workbook. So I just use a blank one because it's the most customizable one. And the first thing you wanna do in the top left-hand corner is write the name of your subject. So subject name and code, and then I just make it bigger so it's clear to me. You can do like one page per subject or you can chuck it all on one up to you. Just to keep things organized, I also will write the final exam date on here. So first thing, I'll just create a table under here. I will usually put the lecture number in the header. You want to put the different ways that you want to revise for this topic. So this is the part that's completely customizable. Do it however you want. So I tend to do lecture notes. I will also do active recall questions and answers on Notion. And then I'll do spaced repetition. I like to do blurting learning outcomes. And then I also sometimes do summary pages. Then the final column you want to add at the top here is one I like to call difficulty. I bold this and then just make this a different color, usually just gray. And then along the left hand corner, I'll just write the lecture number and then title, just so if I need to search for the notes, that's how I label it in my laptop. So it's easy to find. And then I'll continue this to however many lectures I have. So for the sake of this template, I'm just gonna add 10 lectures because it should be enough. And then, as I said, super simple. So all I do is basically when I've finished a task, I will fill it in with the green color and then do the same once I've completed tasks. So that kind of acts as my check mark is filling in the box. If something's in progress, I will make it yellow and then that's pretty much it. This is sort of my routine that I go by. During the lecture or after the lecture, I'll write lecture notes. So then usually by the time I come to exam revision, this column should be ticked off. And then active recall questions and answers. What I'm referring to there is I will go onto Notion and then for each lecture, I will write a bunch of questions based on the lecture content. So 
for example, name the three endocrine glands within close association with the brain. That might be the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, and the pineal gland. And then I write the answers underneath these toggle lists just so they kind of act as flashcards. So that's what I mean by active recall question and answer. That I tend to do as well after I do my lecture notes, so pretty close to when the lecture was delivered. So I don't usually need to worry about that close to my final exam revision. But the areas that I focus a lot more close to my final exams are these four columns. This one's pretty self-explanatory. A one page summary is basically summarizing all the content. I tend to do this on A4 blank paper. So if I wanna draw diagrams and just like rewrite my notes in the most concise manner or like trying to combine different areas of the topic together, that's what I'll do on a one page summary. So once I've completed that, I will tick those off. These I tend to just do in chronological order because I find it the easiest. Once I've completed that and I'm going into the final stages of my exam revision, these three columns become extremely important. So obviously by the end of my exams, I wanna have completed this entire table. The first one I'll target is space repetition one. So SR1 I've written here. So pretend I'm three weeks out from my exam. So space repetition one, I have 1st of July, 1st of July, 1st of July. I wanna do these three lectures. So when I get to space repetition one, I'll open up lecture one and answer all of these questions and recall all of these from memory or, or what I can. And then once I've done that, I come to this difficulty scale. So here I will either rate it difficult, moderate, or very hard. Easy, if I found it okay, I was confident with it, I will color it in green. I can even put a rating on it if you really want. You can add an extra column and rate it. So that, I'm gonna give that a nine, the date I last wrote that, so 1st of July, is once I've completed all of these on the 1st of July, then I'll tick these off, and I continue this for all of the first repetitions. Okay, so pretend I've, that's how I've organized it in that order, just chronological order, because it's the easiest. But as I was completing it, maybe I found lecture four really hard. So I'm gonna make that red. The rest of these are okay. Maybe lecture eight was like also really hard. And then lecture 10 was like moderate. So it was okay. Like I could remember some things, but there were still gaps in my knowledge. So I would highlight that yellow. And then I'm just gonna go back in and put all the dates that I last wrote this rating. Now, once I've completed my first space repetition of the content, I'm now two weeks from the exam. I want to do my space repetition, so I am ensuring that the content is staying in my head. Pretend on the 2nd of July I did this lecture 4 and I've said here that the difficulty was hard. Maybe it was a 3 out of 10. These red ones here I want to prioritize in my revision. So obviously I found this content really hard. I want to be doing these ones first rather than going back in chronological order and just starting again because these three lectures, I rated this a nine out of 10. There's no point in doing that again if I've remembered it. I can do it later on once I feel more comfortable with these red ones. So I'll do this one closer out, my second repetition. I'll do this one on the 6th of July. This one maybe I found also really hard. Maybe I rate it as a one. I'm gonna do it again on the 8th of July, the day after. Lecture 10, I also found difficult, but I'm gonna, I didn't find it as difficult as these ones. So I can do it maybe later on, I don't know, 13th of July. And then because those ones were, the rest of these were okay, once I feel comfortable with doing these and I can convert these to a higher rating and a green color code, then I will go back and do these other lectures. And usually I'll just do it in order of whatever rating I've put. So it's again, prioritizing the ones that I found the most difficult. It's not a very strict planner, as you can see. I just like go by how I'm finding my revision. So if I find one difficult, I'll do it closer. And then that's how I plan out my days after I've done the first repetition. So then once this second column is completed, I might do a third repetition, especially if I'm finding some of these still really difficult. But then the last thing I do, like maybe the week before my exams, or a few days before 
is what I call blurting learning outcomes. So what I mean by blurting learning outcomes is basically I will go into my uni website. So for this subject, they put the learning outcomes here on the subject page under the topic. So I click here and we get given for this lecture, we got given four dot points. So if you read these and you understand like what this is talking about, they're very generic and very broad. So for this lecture, I think there are about 30 something slides and there's four points they wanted you to gain out of that. So what I'll do is I'll use these as questions. So they're kind of framed in a question like manner. So this one, identify and describe the layers of human skin. I will do from complete memory, trying to recall as much information I can about the layers of human skin. You want to do this closer to your final revision because I feel like in the early stages you don't have enough detail or enough knowledge to be able to answer such a broad question well. So I do this towards the end when I feel more comfortable with the content and if I find an area still difficult I'll add it back into this column and prioritize that section. So now you're probably wondering what the difference is between doing that versus my questions in Notion and my answer to that is in Notion the questions that I write are kind of very specific so I do answer the learning outcomes like as a whole like once you've answered all these questions but they're much more like specific to whatever I've written the notes whatever was on the slides. The learning outcomes are kind of like generic to like subtopics whereas my active recall questions I've written in Notion are more specific to like the details within each subtopic. So they kind of would help you frame an answer to the learning outcomes. And now I'm going to show you an example of the one I used just so you can see it in action and how it works. Yep, so this was the one I used for my last set of exams that I just did last semester. I had two separate tabs for my two subjects. My first tab was for anatomy and as you can see on the left hand side here I have all my lectures listed. So this one wasn't too bad, it had 22 but I think physiology had like 38, yeah, a lot of lectures. So as you can see the ones in my first space repetition were pretty much in chronological order and then the space repetition two, I started off with the ones I found the most difficult. And then by the end you want to hope that this column here about it being difficult is all going to turn green before your final exam because that means you are comfortable with most of the content. And just like note in my tracker you'll see like some stuff is blank even though I've already done my exam and that's just because I didn't manage to get around to it. But I did prioritize these ones over the learning outcome blurting because they're essentially very similar things. This one is just an added thing if I had extra time. You're probably wondering what this one down here is and that's just because I had two different exams for this subject so I had a theory and a practical exam but I essentially did the exact same thing, listed all the practicals we had to do and then these were my methods of revising. I will also write down random notes so if I found something difficult in the practical you can see here there were specific things in that topic I found difficult even though most of it was okay so I just wrote that down as a note so if I was coming back I knew to target those areas. The last thing I want to talk about is my IB tracker. So this one was how I started off using revision trackers in the first place. Be warned it's kind of a bit all over the place but it made sense to me. So this was the one I used for the IB. As you can see very if it loads yes as you can see there's a lot going on here and to anyone looking at this they're probably like what the hell is this girl she's a maniac but it really helped me so I'm going to show you exactly what I did it's kind of like an excel tour but no one's ever done this on youtube before <laughs> so the different color tabs I have here are different subjects as I said you can have separate pages for different subjects but I'm lazy and like to view it all at once. The colors I associated here are just the ones, the same colors as my binders for those subjects. So I have English, Chinese, economics, chemistry, maths, and biology. So the only difference between this and the one I use for uni is that for the IB, as you'll know, there's a wealth of past papers you can get access to. So 
I use this not only as a revision tracker, but also a past paper tracker. One key example, chemistry, there were an insane amount of past papers that you had access to. So I took my exam in November 2018, so my past papers went from May 2018 all the way back to, look at May 1999. Obviously a lot of papers. If you're anything like me, when I was going about this revision and doing these past papers, I didn't really go in order, I just like did whatever one I felt that day and kind of jumbled it up and mixed things up. So being able to tick certain papers off was really helpful because otherwise I would get through half a paper and realize I had already done these questions before. So having this was helpful so I could see which ones I hadn't done. Pretty self-explanatory on the left-hand side, I have the past paper year and time zone. Same deal, I ticked it green once I completed it. And then the questions I got wrong. So in the multiple choice, I noted down every question that I got wrong in that paper once I'd finished it. Because one method of revision for me in IB chemistry specifically was to document my mistakes. This was probably one of the most helpful revision techniques you can use in the IB or any syllabus that has a lot of past papers because you learn best from your mistakes. What I did was if I had set aside revision to do a past paper one day, once I'd completed it, I'll tick it off, write the questions I got wrong. And then later on, I would document my mistakes in a separate booklet. So then I could go back and look at these questions and tick it off once I'd completed it. And then for some reason, my camera just like rudely cut off. So tragic, I know, but I basically said everything I was going to say anyway. Just one last thing with the IB revision tracker is you'll notice that for different subjects they were kind of structured differently and the primary reason for that was just because I had different ways of revising for different subjects so say for example for English it was more essay based so there wasn't as many papers and like writing summary notes wasn't that helpful so I did things like writing essay plans practice annotations and also device flashcards so you can kind of alter it to whichever way will help the structure or the style of that subject I'll leave a blank template of my IB revision tracker in the description and you can also see it on my website study-collab.com and if you did any of the same subjects as me you can download this tracker and use it for your own revision and look at the different ways that I revised for that subject. And that's everything for this very long and chatty video. Hopefully you found this helpful and can try and implement this into your own exam revision routine. If you find this kind of tedious, then you don't have to use it. But I have put my blank template in the description to help you out. You can try it out and see if it works for you. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel down below and also turn on the notification bell to be notified when I post next and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!